Herzegovina. It's their first match on these home shores since April, and a lot has happened since then. Maybe bronze will. She does. Oh, yes! An absolute belter! Taylor could be in here. Takes it wide. Can she finish from here? Jodie Taylor. Yes, she has! Yes, she has! Oh, brilliantly done. 1-1. One, one. Into the penalty. Nearly came from Gibby. It's off the bar. Yes, Thursday night's goalless draw in Duisburg was another landmark for these history makers and proved their World Cup third place playoff win against Germany was no fluke. Now attention turns to another major competition and with me to see how England start their home campaign are two players who've appeared in a European Championship final. Kelly Smith and Rachel Brown Finnis were at either end of the pitch in the 2009 final defeat against Germany. Great to have you both with us. Uh, Kelly, what will it be like for England appearing in front of a home crowd after achieving so much this summer? Yeah, they're going to be wanting to, to perform against the home crowd that have travelled here today, obviously, obviously coming off the back of the Olympics, winning that bronze medal. What a fantastic performance. And they probably looked and itching to, to see when that home game in England is to, to come out and perform and, and, you know, really get the fans on, on board again. So they're probably really looking forward to it. Yeah, they have had to wait a while. Rachel, what do you think the expectations are like now? Have they changed? Well, I think the crowd here today will be expecting goals, 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 which is fantastic. But I think as far as going into a tournament, England are now expecting to win it, you know, in-house, but also the media surrounding it as well. Kelly, there'll be presentations to a number of players from UEFA to mark their achievement in gaining 100 caps. You've already picked up yours. How did that feel? It must have been a proud moment. Yes, for you. it's a massive achievement to get one cap, let alone 117, but to go and onto the field just before the game with Jill Coulthard, Rachel Unit, and Karen Carney. There's some others missing there, but it's such a massive honour to represent your country and something that will hold dear in my life forever. Congratulations to all of you, still with some way to go to reach that landmark is Steph Wharton. But after England's World Cup exploits, the captain is now a household name and she's been telling Sue Smith how she's adjusting to her higher profile. Duggan making a run two towards the near post. Same to the captain, Horton. It's in! It's 1-1! One, one. Absolutely fantastic. When you need somebody to step up, your captain, Steph Horton, that is a big, big goal. Steph, bit of a, a delayed homecoming, but how excited are you playing in front of a home crowd again? I think oh, it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. I think um, throughout the World Cup, we were always hearing about how much support we had back at home and uh, the reception we got when we got back to Heathrow was fantastic and the messages ever since. So, yeah, it's been a long time coming, but I think the girls will get the reception that they deserve and for all our success over in Canada. So what was it like actually coming back home? Uh, it was a bit surreal, to be honest. I don't think it, it took quite a while to sink in and breakfast with Prince William to then go to Downing Street to go to Wimbledon, meet a certain David Beckham. I think it's one of them weeks where you think, oh, my God, as if we've just done that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, are you recognised more, would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think um, ever since we've come back, um, me and KB just doing a general food shop and coming out and going to the car and a man driving past and a wife and this going, Steph, Karen, but Karen, how's your eye? And I'm thinking, oh, no, he's even just picked that out. She's like, oh, not well done or anything. She's like, how's your eye? She's like, that's five weeks ago. You had a, a little WhatsApp group, didn't you, when you were over in the World Cup? Do you still have that? And is it like, are you still as like close as what you were in the World Cup? Yeah, I think so. I think the WhatsApp group with different times was going wild. And uh, I think we, we still have that group when it's still on our phones and it's important that we check in with each other and make sure that we as tight as a group as we are when new players come into the squad. Cool as you like. Deadlock broken. England lead Germany. So as the best European team in the World Cup, sounds good, that, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how will you cope with the expectations? How, how do you think you'll cope with that? I mean, I believed as captain of this team that we could go all the way. Um, the more that that tournament went on, the more that we won each game. I think the momentum and the belief in the squad, you could see that, you could just feel it. Like, 
Um, I think so now, of course, we've got to have better expectations, but not only from us inside the camp, but from outside. There's going to be a lot of teams that want to beat us now, and it's trying to use that pressure in a good way. Well, now Steph and the team have to focus on getting to the European Championships in Holland, and they've made a pretty decent start. They thrashed Estonia 8-0 in their opening qualifier in September. All the other teams in the group have played one more game, uh, more than one game, I should say, but England can go top with a big win today. Group winners and the best six runners up from the eight qualifying groups will go through. Rachel, qualifying surely just a formality. Absolutely. I mean, they've already talked about setting their sights high on winning the tournament. Of course, you can't be complacent going into these games, but Mark Sampson's had the flexibility to change the squad today, and I still think they'll go out, put in a convincing performance, and come away with three points and a convincing win. Kelly, first game for England on home soil. What can we expect to see? England will want to impress. Attacking football? Hopefully, yeah. Obviously, coming off the back of that 0-0 um, tie in Germany, Mark's changed it around a lot. He's given some, some new players um, some experience. But I expect to see goals today. Like, like Brownie said, um, Bosnia aren't, aren't that good. Um, but no, I think some good attacking fluid, fluid movement. When you play a team that's not as, as good as you, um, you have to get on the ball, be confident, be bold, be brave um, and score goals because that's what, what's important. Three points and goals. Well, I think the fans who've turned up to see the Lionesses are expecting to see plenty of goals here today too. Scotland are underway in their home qualifier against Macedonia. We'll bring you action from that game at half-time, but right now let's cross over to our commentators. Former England international Sue Smith is alongside Jonathan Pearce. Thanks very much, Gina. Good afternoon, everyone, from Ashton Gate on a wretched, windy afternoon here in Bristol as the French officials lead out the two teams for England's homecoming. A special welcome for the World Cup bronze medalist. Special presentations we've seen to the players who passed 100 caps, who played a leading role in this remarkable rise of English women's football to such an extent that their red hot favourites to land a thumping victory today to match those of their World Cup qualifying home results. 23 consecutive clean sheets in all home qualifiers, 44 matches unbeaten in World Cup and European Championship qualifiers. Bosnia expected to be physical and stubborn with 10 behind the ball and a high line. Mind you, that could be suicidal against England's pace going forward. They started their World Cup qualifying home matches here in spectacular style. Mark Sampson, a homecoming for him as well. He was a successful manager of Bristol Academy, taking them to two FA Cup finals and second place in the WSL. Around about five miles from here, on the other side of the city, the Bristol Rovers side of the city, as the two teams line up. England in white in front of the Dolman stand, named after a former Bristol City chairman of the 60s and 70s. There will be another presentation that will be made, and that will be to Hoff, who has played such a huge role in English football over the years, the chairman of the FA Women's Board. The first presentation as recognition for playing She'll call towards her now. Or she should do. The plan is Jill Scott. There's Farrah Williams down there who's also getting a presentation. But Jill, all there with her nephews, Charlie and Dexter. Very special to her. Uh, past 100 caps in the 1 0 victory over Australia last month. And there's. Farrah Williams, her special UEFA presentation from Sue Hoff. And, of course, no one has played more international games for England than Farrah in the men's or the women's game. She's got a slight injury. She's only on the bench today. So are there special presentations? day of emotions and there's another special player so Casey Stoney yes of course you know, we've had Casey Stoney Farrah Williams and, and obviously the, the other players that were, were mentioned earlier there I think to, to reach one cap for your country but to reach over a hundred exceptional it's a UEFA policy now for all players who've reached 100 caps to get a special presentation this is for 
Jill, as we were saying, and the uh, FA's Chief Executive Officer, Martin Glenn, scheduled here to present her with that award. And uh, she walks with Charlie and Dexter, and there he is. What a World Cup she had, Sue. So I think she became a sort of world star in Canada. You're right. I think she was a, she was a household name, wasn't she? And, and Jill Scott, is she always performs well on the big stage and sometimes goes a little bit unrecognised, but it, like you say, in the World Cup, she seemed to step up to that mark and she had an excellent tournament. And it's great to see her progressing and, and getting even better. So we'll pause for the anthems and Ashton Gate in Bristol ahead of England against Bosnia, Herzegovina. And this European Championship qualifying. International side for 18 years, Bosnia and Herzegovina. They're a fair way behind England in development of the women's game, it has to be said. Seven changes from that nil-nil. Bardsley, who was excellent, Taunton, Knobs and Stokes likewise all remain. Coming in, Amy Turner, who played in the qualifying win in Estonia, 8-0. Casey Stoney, earn, MBE, I should say, earning 125th cap. Jess Clark looking to reach a third European finals. Laura Bassett, one of the stars of the summer, getting her first international this campaign. Gemma Davison also comes in after a title-winning season at Chelsea, alongside Annie Aluko, a sub in Estonia, restored to the starting lineup. Expect her to score today. And also perhaps Izzy Christensen too. She came on in Germany having scored in Estonia. Let's have a look at Bosnia and Herzegovina. One change from their 1-0 win in Serbia in the week. A defensive one with Radeljic, a left-back or centre-back coming in there on the left-hand side of the midfield, we think, replacing the forward, Lihovic. Six of that side are at runaway league leaders SFK 2000 of Sarajevo. They're also managed, by the way, by the national coach, Samira Huren. Radeljic plays in Croatia, Sheslika at Worcester, Massachusetts, and Nikolic in Serbia. She scored a hat-trick against Estonia earlier in qualifying. Don't think they'll be looking for hat-tricks today, though, Sue. <laughs> I don't think they will. I think, you know, this is a, a different test for, for England. They played Germany, and it was quite a defensive test, and how could they cope with, with the German attacking players? Today, it's all about attacking, it's all about creating things, making things happen, because I completely expect Bosnia to just sit back, defend and, and bank up and make it really, really difficult for, for England to break them down. Well, a feature of the last World Cup qualifying campaign was the way they started at home to Belarus, 6-0, the way they started at home to Turkey, 8-0, the way they started also against Wales. That was a closer game, but the 
opening 15 minutes crucial for England to get into their strike. It is, yeah, they need to start on the front foot. I know that's a, a real term that, that football managers use at the minute, but it's important. They need to press high, they need to win the ball high, but I expect them at times to have maybe five or six players going forward. England players in a huddle. Casey Stoney leading the chat in there, so experienced. Made in the European finals of uh, 2009 and 2013. She was on the bench throughout the finals of 2005. Steph Horton, a natural leader, that's why she was picked as captain of the side by the manager. Ambitious to do well and led the team very well in Canada. She really did, and there's a few leaders there looking at Laura Bassett. You mentioned Casey Stoney, Steph Horton. They've now got that experience, and they've also got youth that's coming through who will, you know, they, they will help them out. Laurent Skinner, the referee from uh, France, has finally got the teams together to reach the halfway line, and England will kick us off and underway, kicking from left to right towards the old east end. It used to be a covered standing area here now part of the rejuvenation renovation of ashton gate pause a little bit of quiet good turnout horrible wintry day very windy england all in white will commence and kick off their home european championship qualifying campaign and immediately look for jess clark who has pace to burn and is also hungry to do so well for England, having been left out of the squad for Canada in the summer. Played a, a role in qualifying from the bench. Bosnia will get it away, as far as Steph Horton. 66 gap for the captain today. Stoney brings it out. It's for uh, Demi Stokes. Came through to the side in a major way in qualifying for the World Cup. Didn't make the final squad. Played left side midfield in Germany in the week. So high to try and win it back was uh, Izzy Christensen. He will try and press high and win it in that final third. And it's cleared away there by Amira Spasic, one of the SFK Sarajevo players. They're eight points clear at the top in Bosnia-Herzegovina even though they played it a game fewer. Very much the dominant side. Pass it to Nobbs. Here's Clark. Into Bassett. I know she was touched by all the messages of goodwill after the semi-final. Own goal against Japan nation rallied behind her they really did and, and she really appreciated that and she, I think she just wants 2015 to, to be over although she had a fantastic World Cup obviously the own goal and then she got sent off controversially should I say in the in the Conti Cup final so I think you know Laura Bassett will want 2015 to finish and she'll start afresh in, in 2016 but what a player and what a mentally strong player she is England look for Nenia Luka is Christiansen first corner of the day in an interesting group here on the edge of the penalty area. Look at that little huddle. Well, their set pieces were a feature of Canada 2015. Well, they used Lucy Bronze so well. She's not uh, playing today. She's got a little bit of a knock. Wasn't risked for this. So watch for Stoney. He's trying to shrug away her marker, whose hand's on there. In comes the corner. It's headed on, but Stoney was really being impeded and being held back in there. It's uh, looped up and over. But certainly Radelic was hands-on, Casey Stoney on the edge of the penalty area. She, she really was, that was like a rugby tackle and completely impeded Casey Stoney's run because I think she would have been in there and you can see she's had a little go just at the official just to say, just be aware of that because that's what they'll do. They will physically try and prevent England from getting any sort of opportunity in the, in the area. It's cleared away in the end uh, for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have a free kick now. For the foul on Idia Hatchik, another one of the SFK players. Started in that uh, win against Serbia. They won it late. Nikolic scored the goal. Nikolic expected to be their main danger. 
tall and rangy and will be the target of this free kick there with the orange boots. Skipped away, a little bit of a slip and a slide. And England look here now for Jordan Knox. She had a great spell late in the first half in Germany on Thursday when she started to dictate play. She's got a great engine. That's it to Steph Horton. Into Nobbs. Space for uh, Stokes, but it wasn't a good ball out. Neither was it cleared very well. Here's Davison, what a season she had with Chelsea. Winning the title cup winner, eight goals for Chelsea this season. Won the league at Liverpool and Arsenal as well, didn't she? England looking to great now through Manchester City's Izzy Christensen, Nobbs making the run into the box, nearly found away by the Bosnian captain. Following that was Amy Turner of Knox County, and that's a free kick. Amy Turner, fourth international for her, made a debut in March against Australia. Yeah, I'm really pleased for Amy Turner that she's got a chance there at, at right back. She actually played that in again in the Continental Cup final, and I think Mark Sampson was there watching because she was probably Notts County's best defender. So giving her that opportunity to to show what she can do now on an international stage in front of a, a home crowd. Mark Sampson hails from across the River Severn in South Wales. She was a, at Swansea in the academy there. And Roberto Martinez was uh, at Swansea. Played by Horton, powerful header. Back through by Alex Sick. <laughs> now half chance for Davison to turn and run. Christensen looks for it. Led away by Hassan Begovic. See the Bosnia, they're all in their own half defending. Off the head of Melissa Hasanbegovic, the 20 year old centre back. And England have a corner. There they go again into that huddle. What's that all about, Sue? That's just they're, they're saying which corner they're going to do. So they speak, so Izzy Christensen's over there, they have a little word, what corner, which they'll practice this at, at training numerous occasions. But no. they've got so many players that they can aim for, Casey Stoney, Steph Horton, Laura Bassett, Amy Turner, they're all very, very good in the air, so I suspect they've got lots of different options. The edge of the box, Horton trying to slip her marker and to Stoney, Horton attacks it, and Luca was in there, it's loose. It squirmed away, I think it was little Sejlika who got it away, who plays at Worcester Academy, in towards Luca at the near post, and a goal kick is given. There's uh, Armin Hosic, dived on it. Came through into the side against Serbia, she was on the bench for the earlier qualifiers. There's the coach, played herself for her country. Played for uh, Zelenezhnikar as well. Played European champions at league football as a player. Out by Kulis. He's playing left back. But a great deal is known about the uh, Bosnian national team. Fairly uh, secretive about their details. Players come over labelled as attackers who are, in fact, defenders. A little chip towards that Bosnian penalty here and headed away in there by Alexi. And smashed up by Seshlika, Angela Seshlika, moved to Minnesota. And then uh, in 2006, as a young girl, came back in 2010, but has gone back again, leaving her family behind. Jordan Nobbs driving on, a challenge on here by Hatchich. For those 10 SFK players. Here's Stoney. She played against uh, Colombia in the World Cup finals. It was a one star for three appearances. And she settled everything down in that game. Right from the start. Casey Stoney, such an experienced player, so good on the ball, technically very good, and she's had a really good season for Arsenal. So um, I am actually really pleased for her that she's starting today. She deserves this. I think it's important for us to say that Bosnia and Herzegovina are a step 
up the ladder from the likes of Belarus, who were beaten by England 6 0 at home in the World Cup qualifiers, and Turkey. They're a higher quality. They've already beaten Serbia, they've beaten Estonia. They're certainly good enough to finish top three in the group. It should be contested between England and, and Belgium. Yeah, I think so. I think they're, they're still a step behind England. And, and like you can see, they're, they're not coming here to score goals. They're coming here to sit back and defend and, and try and limit the amount of goals that, that England score. They're not committing any players forward at all. Road to Euro 2017, European finals. There's Nobbs. Luca. Davison. Good run. Left the full back behind. Jordan Nobbs wants it. Pull back on the edge of the penalty area. It's gone down fairly easily there. And they find Davison. A little back heel. Stokes. Crowd love that one. Not far off of a full house here. Looking around. Half a chance for Bassett. Plays it into Nobbs. Goes for goal! Off the bar! And saved by the goalkeeper, Clark. Blocked to the near post. Somehow kept out. Well, I've got no idea how that didn't go in. I don't know if the goalkeeper got a, a touch to that, but what a strike from Jordan Nobbs. I thought he'd gone in, and then Izzy Christensen came in to try and get the rebound, but couldn't quite get there. Just seemed to bounce just overhead. But I'd like to see if the goalkeeper got a touch to that. Alexic blocked the second one. You can see Jordan Nobbs, she just has that in her mind. As soon as she gets the ball, still can't see if she actually got a touch to it. I think she just tipped it onto the bar but then did, actually did well. You can see Jordan Nobbs here just shapes up. Oh, does get a touch. That's actually a really good save from the goalkeeper. Izzy Christensen alert, but just couldn't. Again, that's a, a double save. England close to taking the lead. We've already seen what the pace of Davison can do. Direct run. Head up. Carrying on. Challenges by Alexic. At the moment, Alexic, Spahic and Hassan Begovic playing as a back three. They started with uh, Amir Spahic, the number four, playing in a deep midfield position. She's now gone centre-back. It's very much a, a back three with the wing-backs, Seshlika on one side and Kulis on the other. There's a sort of dummy formation going on in the opening five or six minutes, so as if to try and all England, but England expected them to do this. England, in fact, they've also got they got Radelic virtually playing as an additional pullback, tracking back the runs of England's right back Amy Turner. So it is exactly as England thought it would be. They'll have ten behind the ball. Definitely, and it's so hard to play against teams like that. You have to move the ball quickly, and because you can see straight away as soon as they get the ball, they're, they're on you. This is Clark, lovely effort, bending the outside of a right foot. Then the men faded gently to the arms of Hodzic. Yeah, you can see what she was trying to do there. She's just trying to curl it. Lovely little, because that's what they do. As soon as they get a, a, a sniff at they, they all try and close close down. And, and Jess Clark just tried to curl it with the outside of her, her right foot. Couldn't quite get enough power on it, though. Six years after a debut for England. And in the European finals of that year. And in 2013. And in World Cup 11. A very good season, 15 goals. I think it was a very good campaign actually for uh, Notts County. Two finals, I know they didn't win them, but very promising. And she, she was a star this season, yeah. She will work. And I, for me, I, I just think the fact that she got left out of the World Cup squad, she came back, played so so well in her club, and, and got you know rewarded with another England call up. And a former teammate of yours, she is. She's uh, she was my roommate for a, a good number of years, so I know Jess really well. She's the doziest person ever, but the brightest person on the pitch. You know, she's very, sees a game very well. Speaks very highly of you, too. <laughs> she won't mind me saying that. Here's a free kick to uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. So their results so far uh, in this competition mixed, thrashed away at Belgium, 6 0 and at home, 5 0. But they won in Estonia, they won against Estonia, I should say, at home, 4 0. And that's an important win for them against Serbia this year. Here's Demi Stokes. 
the uh, right fullback position for Bosnia and Herzegovina, Nikolina Djakovic, in the uh, number two shirt. And experience, this is a 21st international. Steph Horton could bring it out a long, long way. And just see the shape there again, the drawing bodies behind the ball. Kulis got it away. I think what England are trying to do as well with Jess Clark on this side, she's trying to stretch the game, so she's trying to hook that touchline. And, and Gemma Davidson, because she's a natural right footer playing on the left, she's got a bit more of a free roll and she's coming in field a little bit more. Comes the cross from Clark, but behind the goal it goes. Got to get the ball in behind when you're facing a back five or even a back seven, as it is at times here. You can't play in front, you have to get in behind. Yeah, and you've got to move the ball quickly as well. But it can be really frustrating, so that's where England need to make sure that they stay patient, they stay calm and, and keep sticking to the game plan, I suppose, what, what Mark's told them to do. Yatio stand there. Named after Johnny Atio, Bristol City hero of the early uh, 50s and 60s England international striker. Pass it through the challenge. Oh, there was a late challenge there, went in from uh, Djakovic. The three wants a word. The known goal in the defeat in Belgium did uh, Djakovic. Fairly rudimentary, she mistimed it. Free kick to England. You see Christensen will take the free kicks from over there and the corners. Watch here for Steph Hall. To make her run from in behind a teammate, there she goes. Nearly free at the far post. There's a wicked wind here today, very unpredictable, it's not going to help things. Mine actually. <laughs> Many people made a comment about your hair. Yes! 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 Now uh, here's Stoney. To Aluko. Frustrating World Cup in Aluko. Push forward, that's a good ball by Turner. Away it goes. Any Luca started and she had a substitute's role. It wasn't the World Cup she hoped for. No, and I think she was quite frustrated, so she'd be pleased to get a start today. And I think we mentioned that, that Bosnia might have, have played a high line. That would have been perfect for Any Luca with her pace and behind. But they haven't. They've just stopped back, haven't they? 13 goals in World Cup qualifying. Chelsea striker. Very intelligent. Law degree. Looking at you, do all international England players have degrees? <laughs> <laughs> every, Definitely not a law every degree. Day, every day and every way you're getting better and better. Hey, I've got a sports science degree, I'll have yeah. you know. Oh, well, yeah, just about. <laughs> There's the goalkeeper. It's a safe catch, doing well, very well. Good catch. Yeah, she is playing well, you know, the, obviously the save from Jordan Nobbs early on, and that's a good take with players around it. it it's difficult for a goalkeeper. But, uh, has impressed me, it continues to impress me. When you're down around the England dressing room, and I've been with uh, former England internationals from the men's team around dressing rooms, waiting for teams, and reception isn't always great. They're always so delighted to see you, Sue, and... and uh, Officials from other countries as well. That must, that must make me very proud. I was waiting for a joke to come in. No, <laughs> no not on this occasion. Here's <laughs> Porter for Davison. Starting well. Carrying into the heart of the Bosnia Herzegovina half and creating danger. Gemma Davidson's one of the, the best 1v1 attackers that I know in, in the league. So why, when she made her debut in 2009 against Iceland, she only playing her eighth game for England? It's crazy. Um, her and Hope Powell obviously didn't have a, you know, the, the best of relationships. I'm not too sure why. Um, but, you know, she's, she's played well for her club, played well for Chelsea. Mark Sampson's brought her back in and 
she's showing exactly what she can do. Because as a, as a winger, a wide player, like I say, if you put her 1v1, she isolates defenders and, and beats them with ease. Christensen will take the free kick, bending into the penalty area. Not yet away, ping-ponging around in there. Bassett was forward. It deflected off Djakovic, who finally clears it away. Turner, Dobbs, Davison, onto this side now to take on and beat Hadzic. Oh, a lovely run. Across the far post. Well played again, Amina Hotsic, she's really on top of her game. She really is. I think the England need to see now that she is very good in the air. She's coming to claim crosses, so I think the crosses need to be a little bit better. Instead of whipping towards and maybe whip them away or maybe on the ground. Any Luko in there with her pace, he'll get on the end of things. That's it brought down. Now by Sejlika. England bench there, all the substitutes behind Mark Sampson. They'll be saying goodbye to Naomi Datsun, who is the sports scientist of the team, leaves after this. And Phil Worrell for 15 years, the video analyst, part of a very good England setup. They depart after this. Here's Jordan Nobbs. In goes the cross. And just wide by Luco. That's the cross I was talking about. Exactly, it just needs to be whipped in. So Jordan Nobbs here, this is good play. One and two touch, plays the ball round. Jordan Nobbs just whips it in, just behind the defence. And Enya Luko, good run. Probably should have done better with their finish. Got into that near post area though. Gambled and got in there. That's what you want from your striker. That instinct. To see where the ball's going, but then it's just that finish at the end. Coming on by Hadzic. Now Horton. Oh. Like screaming at her to get higher. Christensen into the box. Here's Luca. Mobs to the right hand side. And the control by Hadzic. Christensen won it back, Knops. England on the attack. Bosnia will get it away. Mikulic clearing away. And a rare touch so far for Karen Barnsley. I don't think she's going to get too many touches of the ball. Horton through the middle. At the other end, though, that's a goalkeeper in fine form. She really is, and, and I can see Karen Barnsley, she's, she's running up and down just to try and to keep herself warm and, and alert. And that's difficult for a goalkeeper when you're not involved in the game and then suddenly you've got to pull off a, a save. She'll be fine, though. She'll keep concentrated, I'm sure. Here's Horton. Knobs. Well, is that a sign there of some England frustration? Do you know they're going to be frustrated? It is difficult, like I mentioned earlier, when a team sits back and they bank up and all they want to do is defend. They're not committing any players, they're not wanting to go forward. It's really hard and you've just got to try and keep the ball. And when you see that, that break or that little, like, movement you just have to give it as, as quick as you can sometimes a few of the players are just taking a little bit too long with their passes and Bosnia are, are cutting it out 11 of the squad were at Euro 2013 when England was so dismal Stoney uh, Scott is on the bench then and Luca played in the final of Euro 29 they got so much experience halfway through the first half though it's nil nil This is a game more reminiscent to the Wales uh, home qualifier, which was played at the New Den, if memory serves me correctly, when Wales, a better team than Bosnia and Herzegovina, but that day England needed to be patient as well. And I think it'll come, I think fitness will tell, because uh, the England girls are, are training full-time now, so coming towards the second half, they just need to stay patient, and when they get that opportunity to, to take it, Cleared away at the back by Spahic. Oh, 
Luca. Little touch around the corner. Yard line, Bristol Rugby Club also play here, of course. A rare sortie forward for Lydia Kulis. Plays her football with the Turbine Potsdam Club, who used to be a, a real force in women's European football. Michael winner back in her home country with the SFK, who has been very much the dominant force in league football. And that is going to be the first and a rare piece of work for Karen Bardsley. Tentative shot, no more than that from Antonella Rijedic. <laughs> Top of the table in Croatia with uh, the Osijek side. I think it's clear there. Nobs, score of a couple of goals for Arsenal in the Continental Cup final. Bolton swings it away. Oaks tried to win it back. <laughs> Steph Horton. 25 minutes gone. Luca coming deep. Whether England need another genuine striker up front. Christensen playing off a of Luca. He's up there now, nearly on the edge of the penalty air. And they get the cross in. Clark. It's a corner to England. Off to Jakovic. That's positive from Jess Clark. Got the ball up and, and she had... It was 1v1 for probably the first time in, you know, in the 25 minutes that she's been playing and she took the defender on and, and won her team a corner. Again the huddle. Then they conspire. They uh, don't trust her hand signals then. <laughs> I actually haven't seen them do that before. We saw plenty from you in Canada in the World Cup finals, hand signals of a sort, Sue Smith. But... <laughs> Waving, obviously. Well, we might call it that. <laughs> I wasn't too offended. <laughs> it comes to the near post through the goalkeeper's hands. Your mum will tell you off now, won't you? <laughs> she will. <laughs> That's lovely. A whipped in ball. Any Luko just challenging. I don't think the goalkeeper actually got her. Did she get a touch to that? We've got huh? a, another corner anyway. I think England had to go produce something special to beat her. I think she's uh, one of the best goalkeepers we've seen from an emerging country. Yeah, definitely. Have to agree. Technically very good so far, the goalkeeper. And play by Keita Nobbs. They get the cross in. And second for the corner. Ben Davison was involved. And the captain, Amir Spahish. Good awareness. Christensen will take the corner. Two, four, six, seven. England players in there. Eight. Plenty of bodies forward then. Laura Bassett trying to slip her marker in towards the near post. Hit beyond. Autumn with the header on. And Luca loops over. That's a better delivery there away from the goalkeeper. Just whips, whips the ball in. Steph Horton does well, just directs it towards, towards goal. And Enya Luco finds herself with lots of space. But she would have preferred that to have been on the floor. I know she has scored headed goals, but she's much better with the ball at her feet. That's two chances for any. She's getting herself into the, the right positions. She just needs to finish them off now. And a great record scoring in qualifying competitions. She's on the shoulder there of the defender, Hasan Bekovic, and got beyond. And can they get the cross back in through Clark? They do. It's missed away wickedly by Nikolic and very nearly expensively. The big striker back in her own penalty area. 
Ruth's clearance, whether she had no communication from the people around her. Completely sliced out of play. It just shows that forward players are back there defending as well. Have no intention of scoring, do they? Christensen will take the corner. England kicking towards what used to be the old home end, the old east end, Bristol City territory. That back out to her. Across the fast stick. Again, the goalkeeper had movement, was strong enough to punch away. She might have got something of a clump. Positioning has been well. That might be the, the right option, maybe short corners. You can see there that Bosnia and Herzegovina aren't switched on. They only send one player out. Good positioning from the goalkeeper. I think it's actually her own player that maybe hits her in the head. It's a bit of a, a delayed reaction. I think she'll be fine. She's had a really good start to this game, though. But she wasn't first choice at the start of the uh, competition. She came into the side in the midweek for uh, Samira Heron. Sarajevo-born coach. Well, I think they've done very well. Organised, dogged, determined, England frustrated with half an hour gone and a little conference going on between the England players. This is where she just tries to punch the ball away. I think it is actually her own defender. It hits her on the, the back of the head or the ear. Bit of a Sunday sore head. Mm. Yeah. What about them? Rub a little bit of cream on, you'll be okay. Oh. There you are. Well, she's done very well so far. And it was a feature, the World Cup qualifiers that we did against the likes of Belarus and Turkey. Their goalkeepers were very, very poor. And I think that's something in the women's game that, that has been developing. And thankfully in England, it's, it's getting better and better. You look at Karen Bardsley, Siobhan Chamberlain, that's, that's actually injured at the minute. You know, Carly Telford, there's so many good keepers now. It's good for Mark Sampson because he doesn't know who to, to choose. And I know Karen Barzi had an excellent game against Germany. That was a lovely comment she made in uh, Stephen made in that interview to you that the uh, white van driver. <laughs> the one thing he said to her was, "How is your eye? Not how's how well did you do in Canada? Not well done to the team." <laughs> There's been so many stories from the girls coming back from the World Cup, and it's really nice that so many people have, have took an interest in them and and how well they did. Uh, I found the whole thing. Absolutely captivating. It was a privilege to be there and be part of it and so close to the England group. Uh, get some so it should be. And get some cards out of two England have possession now with Stokes. Who goes down the line? Couldn't keep it in play. But it's how World Cup should be as well, so it was a uh, it was there was more innocence about it. I know it's not as high profile. I know the pressure isn't on as it is in the men's game. But there was less of a FIFA influence over there in Canada. Uh, it was, it was, as I say, a more charming uh, World Cup experience. And uh, it was like it used to be in the old days and having about eight World Cups. Uh, I had a bit of experience of that. And, and I can tell you, it was great, greatly engaging, that whole experience in the summer. Nobs with the uh, crossing of the penalty here, punched away. And now, Bosnia could break Angela Seshlika. Punched on by Hacic. They're not interested in chasing that. Back she comes into her own half, chasing back as England bring it out. Three step halter. This is very much uh, a training ground exercise. You'll see coaches put this on, attack against defence when the defence might have uh, a man over, or two. Keep your discipline, he said. Keep your patience too, play your football, keep your passing crisp. Yeah, definitely, and, and passing has to be precise, because there's so many bodies around you, you have to make sure that the ball is either to your feet or it's in space and behind, depending where the players are. 
Now, here we have pace from Davison. Game's best player so far. Half a chance for Christensen. Good challenge on her. Really strong challenge there by Kulis. That's it. This place is the pass. Somebody hooked away by Radeljic. Drops to Steph Horton. Durham girl. Missed the uh, 2009 finals with a cruciate injury. Played on through 2013, but she had an ankle problem. In space now, the captain, if they can get it back to her. And she can shoot from distance and does so. But it might take something like that. Not on that occasion, it went high, but it might take an effort from that sort of range. You're right, just a little bit of brilliance, and, and Steph's got a fantastic technique with her right foot. So why not have a go from there? It's a little bit wayward with the shot. Shot to fame in the Olympics of 2012. A very, very good World Cup. See more one or two adverts and things now. I think she was the first woman player on the front of the uh, shoot football magazine. Stony away. Christensen, one of the Dolman stand. Good run by her. The other way. Didn't used to have seats over there in the lower tier. There was a big wall, a drop down. First big cantilever stand of its sort in English football. That designed by the old chairman here, Harry Dolman. Dear old man, so Widow Marina still around. She's uh, connected to Bristol City as a youngster, and um, we revered the Dolmans, I can tell you. Here's Nobbs. Clark. Horton. Away towards Demi Stokes. Driving on here towards the dead ball line, pulls the cross back, blocked. Very nearly through towards Aluko, who was waiting. Davison, Nobbs. This is where perhaps they need to move the ball a little bit quicker. Horton, Nobbs can turn. Get a shot away. Back to her. Bassett. Over it goes. With 11 Bosnian players between her and the dead ball line in the last 25 metres of play. That was much better from England, though. They were passing the ball, one and two touch. They went out onto the right wing, then they came back out onto the left wing. And I think it's trying to switch play as quick as you possibly can so that they can't shift the cross. forward with their passing they've got to turn back out and that's not what they're used to it's a bit crushed back in there ready, ready, find ready, the ready, space. Ready, ready. oh that's long and plunging into the england penalty area horton was decisive that's it Estonia, in a minute of the game in Estonia. Steph Horton, an ever-present this season. Looks long for Christensen. Back at her comes Djekovic. Davison again, well-balanced, fleet-footed, enterprising. Again, it all gets stuck in that melee. He bounces off the French referee. Nobs. Good one, two. Looking for Iluko. Look at the blue shirts back there. Still for a radio station here. He's a regular contributor to the traffic news. He couldn't say chocker block. He used to say chocolate block. It's all chocolate block. I didn't used to speak this posh, too. So. 
<laughs> or me. Well, here's Davison. Will it break here kindly for Clark? And cleared away. Knobs again, full of energy, so typically. Bassett covering a lot of ground. Stoney. Looks for movement in off that left-hand side from Stokes, plays it back to the captain. She might think about having a go here. Just wonder if that's where they could look for Tony Duggan on the edge of the penalty and making a run in there. That's an option off the bench for him. Uh, Jody Taylor out uh, out there today on the bench. She's uh, got a slight injury. Be brought away by uh, Angela Sheslika. Nice smile from Missy Christensen. Absolutely thumping down with rain. Oh. Wintry Sunday afternoon. And Samson looking on. Ryan Spacey there with him. Over 90 caps for England. We've said it before, she plays a big, big role. Alongside Mark Samson does Marianne. Yeah, she does, and, and the fact that she's played for England, she's played at the highest level. She's got that relationship with the players. And they really respect her, which always helps. Aluka into the gap, bent by Jordan Knox. And she pulled the cross back in towards the near post. Oh, it very nearly broke to Christensen. Squirmed away, Knobs with a snapshot. Blocked and away by Hassan Begovic. Last five minutes of the first half. England to do with a breakthrough before the interval. Nobbs to the edge of the penalty here. Christensen on the half turn, tried to get the shot away. Stokes, here's Davison. Oh, lovely trickery, but she's given it away there. Fighting to get it back off the tall Nikolic. Who's carried well for her side and... It's just to relieve some sort of pressure, but it'll come back on the Bosnian defence. And you wonder how long they can keep this up. English players, of course, now out of season. WSL has finished. One or two of them played in the Champions League. Chelsea beaten by Wolfsburg and out. Here's Bassett. Davison of Chelsea. Horton of Manchester City. They need to win silverware next season, Nobbs. Oh, lovely ball in here to Clark from Christensen. Low cross. And again, the well positioned Spahic got it away. She's played very well for Bosnia Herzegovina. She really has. She's just been in the, the right position every time the ball comes in. But that's better. It's like it's the ball in behind. It's that diagonal ball. You've got the pace of Jess Clark, Gemma Davidson, Enya Luko spinning off. It's just getting that final pass. I think if Jess Clark could have just found there was Enya Luko. There's another player coming in. If, if you could have just found them, it would be a chance. Good coordination at the back for Bosnia and Herzegovina. So many of them play for that. That's a K side of one. 12 consecutive league titles there. And comes across looking for Horton. It's all the way through. Stoney will give chase. Thought about the back pass to Demi Stokes, but that would have been cut off by Djakovic. So it goes longer to Jordan Nobbs. And Keith played over 450 games. Horton, is he Christensen? Gets the back heel from their club mate, Clark. A bit hesitant. Still has it. And in the end, as she tried to find Christensen, could only find Nikolic. Stoney, safety first. 25 yards higher. Go on, up you, go. You, the, you can just hear Mark Sampson there saying to Gemma Davison, 25 yards higher, get right on the shoulder of the fence on the edge of the penalty, and Luka's turned in the box, the shot is deflected by Spahic. England have a corner, but more significantly, they're starting to look a lot fresher than one or two of the Bosnian players out there. Yeah, because it's so difficult when you're a team that's just chasing the ball, you don't have any possession, you're just constantly closing down. It's mentally and physically draining. 
Half time can't come soon enough for Bosnia Herzegovina here. Crucial time for England. That end of the ground has been developed. There's a coffee bar in there now, sports bar and grill. It was a hot dog stand in my day, sir, and it wasn't very savoury, <laughs> to be honest. In comes the corner kick, all the way through. Clark at the far post. Goalkeeper was beaten to it, beaten by the flight. That's a wonderful ball in. Absolutely whipped in just at the back post. Jess Clark's not bad in the air as well. Just seemed to miss time a jump. Last minute of the half, plus stoppage time, of course, to come. There won't be a lot of that. Knobs. Can they get the cross in? Deflected away, England have a corner. I can't think we'll have more than one minute of stoppage time. There. In the booking, there's no goals, of course, or substitutions or injuries, really. Say a minute. Confirmation in just a few seconds. Referee having a word. Well, I don't know what that was about. Hatchet has gone down. Ida Hatchet. Saying she got elbowed in there. Oh my goodness. Well, there's nothing in there at all. She was holding on to Bassett. There wasn't an elbow oh. and she didn't need to go down. That is. I hate to see that. That's something that the women's game really prides itself on. Wasn't the chin. Nowhere near. Complete play acting. We do have one minute of stoppage time. Swept away high towards the far post and gathered by a very good goalkeeper. And this could be a more and more frustrating afternoon for England. There we have that confirmation of Ryan, I guess. Overall thoughts of the first half, sir? I think it's just, a, like you mentioned, it's a frustrating afternoon. England need to remain patient, they need to keep the ball, they need to probably move the ball a little bit quicker at times, use the space out wide and the ball in behind, and I think once they get a goal, hopefully the floodgates will open for them. They've had all of the ball, they've had the chances, but the Bosnian goalkeeper Hodgic is in flying form. That's why it's England nil, Bosnian hurts a Kavina nil at half-time. So, a frustrating first half for England. Not exactly going to plan, is it, Kelly? It's not. You would have expected England to be a couple of goals up by now. Jordan Ops with the shot, Izzy Christensen coming in. It should be two or three nil up, but it is frustrating. For me, the key to this game is keeping Gemma Davidson wide and Jess Clark wide. For me, they're coming in too, too deep into the middle of the park and it's already congested there's already five six seven Bos bosnia players in the middle get them wide they're good at 1v1s get the ball to the byline and cross it into the box rachel your thoughts on the first half well i, I think some credit to bosnia they have banked up they've no interest at all in going forward it's like dealing with a brick wall oh it, well, it, well it really is but as Kelly mentioned there, what they have to do is stretch the pitch, make the pitch as big as possible, get Bosnia and Herzegovina chasing the ball, they'll tire and that will then open up. I think we've been a little bit too flat, so the front line, uh, sometimes Ennis just kind of stood on the toes of the back line, there needs to be a lot of movement in and out. Jordan Nobbs has done that quite well, but again, stretching the pitch, creating space. Bosnian players defending so deep, but all in their own half a lot of the time. We should be able to see some examples of that now. Yeah, definitely. This is where uh, Izzy turns off the back shoulder here. And you can see how many uh, Bosnia players are there. It's so congested. And this is what I mean by getting players wide. Um, off the, obviously, the ball's played in. Look how narrow. The, we've got four players there, all within sort of five yards of a width of each other. When you're not going to break down a back line of seven, eight players when you're all in such a small you know, space. I think Jordan Nobbs has done well. She plays the ball and then he's kind of in between... Uh, looking for the ball, always checking her shoulder, looking to receive. And we've had some chances from distance. I think Jordan Nobbs has, has really uh, has tried that. Izzy Christensen on that occasion. Steph Horton's had a few goes. But really, it is difficult to break down. 
Jordan Nobbs uh, could have sent them 1-0 up within 10 minutes. That was a, a great chance. Look how many numbers are just behind. It's just so hard to play against. You need to get the ball out wide, put the ball into the box. There's just no opportunity for a shot there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight players and then obviously they break. Um, but it needs to be better. Get Gemma and... Um, and Jess wider, as I, as I said, it's frustrating, but it will come. You know, keep believing in yourself, keep pressing high up, try and win the ball. But I think those two are key for me in this game. Bosnia have come with a game plan that they've implemented. So far, it's worked. Jordan Nobbs nearly sent England one nil ahead. Yes, it was a great shot. Jordan done this in the in the Continental Cup final. Um, you know, she's got that just that little no back lift. Yeah, no one. Well, good save by the keeper. Izzy probably should have headed that in. And again, Jess Clark. Um, following up, you know, she was close, wasn't she? But you see Jordan Nobbs, no back left, just whacked it. I think it kind of picks up pace. The goalkeeper doesn't see it late, but reacts maybe a little bit late, and we go to goal line technology. It definitely doesn't go in. It's a former goalkeeper, got to say credit to the goalkeeper. I think we'll see some clips soon of how well she's done. She reacts well to the second one as well, really, to keep Bosnia in it. Just how impressed were you with their goalkeeper? Bearing in mind this is a side to a, a ranked, you know, outside the top 50. Uh, and very often that it implies that their goalkeeper has been very weak in the women's game. That is, that is usually they've been the first target. Um, but she's not even Bosnia's first choice goalkeeper. But on this occasion, she's been safe. I, and I, I do for think England are playing into Bosnia's hands, though. Playing that ball directly up into the keeper. She's coming, she's dominating her area. Here we see here, look, and put a bundle of, bundle of players, and she takes it comfortably. Get the ball to, into the box, cross it on the floor. For players coming in. You can either play it like that or what you've got to do is have someone pin the goalkeeper. How many times do we see that in a domestic game yeah. that someone like Jess Clark would pin the goalkeeper, doesn't let her have free range of the box, can't come and collect them that easy then? Grand Barsley's having a quiet time, isn't she? She's probably freezing at the other end. <laughs> She's oh. a little bit bored, I think. But no, it's, it's hard for goalkeepers in this kind of game because you never know, it could, it could, could uh, come to, uh, down the other end and she could be cold, she could be frozen, it could be a goal. So yeah. she needs to keep switched on. She does. Conditions as well don't help goalkeepers like this, but she has to ensure she stays switched on so she can control the rest of her team as well. Enia Luko had a couple of chances we should be able to see. Yeah, this is this this um, shot here is bread and butter for Eddie. It's a great ball in from Jordan, and she, uh, Eddie just needs to slow down her run a little bit and open up her right leg. Great run, quality ball in, and should be a goal really. Should be one 0 there by Eddie. Just a little bit of composure, was it right at the end? And I think here Eddie's not known for her heading prowess particularly. And I think if we actually slow it down in retrospect, she's probably got time to bring it down. Yeah actually turn it that's just having that it. little look over your shoulder that little bit of awareness maybe a little chest and then turn and volley it but it's just having that little bit of awareness and composure in front of goal who impressed you the most in the first half I think Gemma Davison was good in that she was breaking lines. She's unpredictable, you know, both to our team and to Bosnia. Um, so she's kind of an off-the-cuff player. She's been the difference, but she can't drop really, really deep to come and get on the ball because that is kind of counterproductive for England. I think Jordan Nobbs is making the game tick in the middle of the midfield. She's opening up, trying to play forward, trying to dictate the, uh, dictate the game, and I think she needs to get on the ball a little bit more. OK. Well, the other home nations will be doing all they can to qualify for Euro 2017 alongside England. Scotland seem to be doing a pretty good job so far. They are top of Group 1 and level on points with top seeds Iceland after three wins from three. Right now, they're in qualifying action against the lowest-ranked team in their group, Macedonia. I'd expect plenty of goals in this one. Let's bring you up to speed with all the action from the first half with Dan O'Hagan. Well, no doubt here the Scots are really bossing the early uh, exchanges. Really bright start here by the team in those brand new pink shirts. And Lord has crossed dangerous. The first goal comes. And no great surprise, the Scots have got it. And Jane Ross in their quickest, sharpest with the opening goal for Scotland. Lord. Uh, wreaking real havoc so far on this left-hand side, Hayley Lauder. They can't contain Lauder at the moment. She's going to win a corner here too, off uh, Ellie Yakovska. Well, Lauder made the goal and she's made a real inroad so far and giving Macedonia's defender a torrid time in these early moments. Lauder has gone for goal herself here and there is the second. Well, the Scots have made such a strong start here, and Joe Love has the second goal for them. And Macedonia so far just can't contain this rampant Scottish team. 
I love now, that's her third goal of this qualifying campaign, now 10 for the national team overall. In by Kim Little here, it's a lovely cross, it's another one here for Scotland. And the goals just keep on coming, and Jennifer Beattie has this one. Well, they can't contain the crosses, can they? Lauder, and now Lisa Evans. Evans, oh, escapes the challenge, gets the ball across. Bouncing ball, not cleared here. It comes to Lauder, another goal for Scotland, four and counting. And Lord has made two, now has scored one herself. And this is all too easy for Scotland. They are cruising, coasting and pasting Macedonia. Beatty. Lauder. Love on for Lauder here, no flag. Lauder's cross! And Lauder makes three goals, the Scots have five. And this time Lisa Evans adds her name to the ever-growing list of Scotland scorers. But Lauder now, this first half for her, made three, scored one. Lauder again, the left-hand side is really promising here for the Scots. Lauder's cross! Yet again, the same old routine. And Jo Love has her second, but that now is four assists and one goal in this first half for Hayley Lauder. The left-hand side for the Scots is producing such joy in this first half. Six goals, and Jo Love with a brace. So, Rachel, a very different first half for Scotland after missing out in their last two qualifying campaigns in the playoffs. Do you think this is their best chance of qualifying for a major tournament? I do. I mean, they're sat at top of the group at the moment, joint top with Iceland. And I think the, the game against Iceland in June will be kind of that pivotal game as to whether they qualify top or go into, you know, one of the... To, go in as a runner-up potentially but it's been nearly but not quite for Scotland in previous tournaments but this year the quality of players they've got across their squad is phenomenal that they've not qualified for a tournament before this year I'm absolutely positive they're going to go on and do it okay well Wales didn't get off to the best start in their Euro qualifying campaign they conceded seven goals in two defeats against Austria and Norway but a 4-0 win at home to Kazakhstan on Thursday night lifted them off the bottom of Group 8 ahead of their match in Israel on Tuesday afternoon. But Northern Ireland are in a tough group. They were beaten 8-1 at home to Switzerland on Friday and face the Czech Republic and Italy next in April. Group winners and the six best runners-up from the eight qualifying groups go straight to the finals. Now, Kelly, we've already seen the impact of Northern Ireland and Wales qualifying for the men's European Championships. What do you think the prospect is of the other home nations doing the same in the women's game? We'd like to see them follow suit. Um, but for me, it's going to be a bit big uphill struggle for Wales. They've already lost to Austria and Norway in their group uh, and Northern Ireland losing to Switzerland. So it's going to be very, very difficult as only one um, if topping the group gets out of, out of for qualification. So I don't see it happening, but it would be great if they could. But you never know. You never know. <laughs> OK, well, here in Bristol, it's England nil, Bosnia and Herzegovina nil at half-time. Let's get a view of that first half from inside the England camp now. Goalkeeper Alex Greenwood is with... Uh, not, she's not goalkeeper. Alex Greenwood is with Sue Smith. Alex, what's your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, we've had some good possession, um, created chances. I think if we can, you know, go down the side of Bosnia, we'll cause them more problems. Get our maybe our wide players a little bit wider, and and yeah, keep keep the ball coming into the boxes. We're causing them a lot of problems doing that. Great defensive performance against Germany. You must be high in confidence. Yeah, personally, I'm I'm high in confidence. I think um, you know we had a great display out in Germany. We were solid defensively, and to come away from there disappointed with a draw is shows how far we've came. What do you think Mark will be saying to them in the dressing room now? I think he'll say remain positive, you know, we, it's, it's still 45 minutes to play, we don't need to panic, the goals will come with chances, um, I think we just need to keep our whiff a little bit more and, and keep creating chances down the side. Do you hate watching from the sideline? Yeah, it's, it's not a nice place to be, but, you know, it's a squad of 23 and we all have to play our role at some point. Cheers, Alex, thank you. OK, well, interesting stuff. What do you think needs to happen in the second half? Do England need to be more creative? Certainly bring the same energy that they have, uh, be patient, um, get Jess, I keep saying it, get, get Jess and Gemma wide, isolate them 1v1 
Um, I'd like to see any get on the scoreline. Um, I think she's played OK today, but she really needs some goals. I think I'd quite like to see Frank Kirby on the pitch, picking the ball up, running, doing a similar job to, to Jordan Nobbs, but she's got a real ability to kind of uh, one-twos around with, with any up front. Um, so I'd quite like to see Frank Kirby be introduced at some point, and I'm sure he will make changes. Based on the performance so far this afternoon, Gemma Davison seems to have a very bright future ahead of her. Impressive performance. Yeah, so far she's she's done okay. I still would like to see a little bit more staying wide. Um, she's probably one of the best 1v1 um, attacking players that we have in England, and certainly now she's starting to shine on, on the on the world stage. She, you know, when she gets you faced up, you think, no, please, I need some help, um, because she is so good technically. She moves her feet so well. She glides past defenders with ease, and that's why she's one of the best, best players for Chelsea. She's had a fantastic season, and she's in the England side because of that. Oh, she's well earned her place, certainly. And you can see how mazy she is, how, how you know, off the cuff her play is, one-twos. But I think she'll have to be careful about holding on to the ball possession. Teams like this are very physical, and you can end up getting you know, a good kicking really if you do hold on to the ball a lot which we've seen happen before what do you think mark will have been saying to the girls at half time um i, I do agree with alex greenwood uh, in that he'll be saying remain patient you know stick to the game plan which i'm sure was to make the pitch very very big and you know keep working on those set pieces because they've had a lot of corners if nothing else which really should be coming to fruition i think maybe continue with the long range shots obviously Bass, uh, laura bassett had one steph had one because they're so um banked up in front of goal test them so bring them out try and get them out and then maybe have a long shot or if they come out then slip it through to any through those gaps through the middle hit the target and make sure you follow in the goalkeeper because we've seen her parry quite a lot of shots already uh, sorry and, and punch as yeah. well so follow them in you can you know pick up those chances once they get one, I think the goals will start flowing. And these sorts of games against inferior opposition does give do give Mark a chance, you know, to try out some new players, try out some new options in the second half. Yeah, certainly. Like we said, Frank Kirby is, is an ideal player for this game. She's technical. She's good one v one to get get at players. I'd like to see Tony Duggan come on. She's um, been a, an inspirational player for England the last last year or so. She had an injury off the back of this season. She's a player that can create and score and take players on. So they they will be my two changes. Do you think Bolton have been better than we expected? Uh, I think, as far as their organisation, I think has been impeccable. Really, it's been shots from distance where England have, have, have had their only chances. So credit to them in that respect. But England have got to stick to their game plan. They are the superior team. They've got to make it count on paper. OK. Well, let me hand you back to our commentary team for the second half, Sue Smith and Jonathan Pearce. Thank you very much. England, I think, would settle now for a repeat of the first ever England international victory on this ground. It was in 1899. England beat Wales 4-0 in the men's game. Goals from Nudge and Edom. Steve Bloomer got a couple and Fred Foreman that day. A long, long while ago. They need to settle for any sort of victory now on this wretched afternoon weather-wise against the very stubborn Bosnia-Herzegovina side. I think they would, and it's quite interesting. I've just been watching Farrah Williams has been talking to Laura Bassett, who's actually playing a little bit out of position. She normally plays centre-half, and she's playing that holding midfield role, and that is the Farrah Williams role, and she's just been talking to her and giving her a little bit of tip, a few tips, a few bits of advice, and I think that's that's great. That just shows the unity of the team for me. Now she needs to release one or two sort of shotgun passes, quarterback-style passes, a little bit faster, use the ball faster from in that position. I think so, and, and get the ball out wide. I think, you know, the, the girls mentioned it at half-time, that when Gemma Davidson and Jess Clark are, are isolated 1v1, they can beat defenders, and then it's that delivery, then it's that final ball in, because as we've seen, the goalkeeper's done well. But with it being a slippy surface, Rachel Brown, I think, mentioned it, can the players follow in? Well, England will be kicking with the wind behind them in this second half from this left-hand side, and then it swirls around and will come back into their faces from their right. It'll be Bosnia and Herzegovina who will get up and underway to the whistle of Florence Clement, the referee from France. Immediately turned out by Amy Turner. And gets there again. The band starts to make some noise. And the uh, John Antio stand away from the left hand side. There's Stokes driving down the line. Davison is ahead of her. She was England's best player in the first half. Stoney and towards Laura Bassett. Stoney will find the captain, Steph Horton. 
Bomber is wide, Mobs coming in close, up towards Eni Luko, who's come from an offside position. Free kick. He is in, in the back of the net, one or two fans hadn't heard the, the whistle. But it was a long, long while before it looped into the back of that net. It's a good diagonal ball from Steph Horton. Can't really see on, on that picture. I think Eni Luko just come from a, yes, an offside had. position. She came from, uh, just before that ball arrived, at her feet, she'd come from an offside position. Squeezed in between two defenders there, Hassan Begovic and Spahic. Oh, well, the shirt of Christensen was being tugged there. And that's a dark free kick to give away. There's the offside. That's a ball from Steph Horton, though, that diagonal. It's difficult to defend. Gordon Nobbs get the ball out wide here to Clark. She turn. As they give away more free kicks, as they chase the game, they will tire. The fact that this is a three-sided ground at the moment, they're making a brand new two-tier uh, west stand right up behind our commentary position. Means there's no, uh, there it is. Means the wind and the rain is coming in from that side. The old TV gantry used to be roughly where we are. The first gantry I ever went up when I was 12 years of age, working for Bristol City. And there was a uh, health and safety, they wouldn't let me do that these days, would they, goodness me? It's only about 10 years ago, isn't it? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Play back here towards uh, Nobbs, in comes across. They're way ahead of their time there uh, with video analysis of games. Back in 1972, that was. Did another free kick here. Nobbs is down. She's okay, though. She drew that challenge in. She, she did, and she actually won the ball first, and you can see just got a, a body in there, in between herself and the ball, and got brought down. It was a good foul. She won herself a good foul. She knew she was going to get hit. Here's Clark <laughs> towards the dead ball line. This is promising. Sets up the cross. Trot straight into I mean, the Hodgkins's hand. Kept a clean sheet away in Serbia in the week. Good, quick feet from Jess Clark, got herself to the byline, you can see she's trying to hit the ball to the far post, just couldn't quite get enough power on there. To anywhere around the goalkeeper, she's just going to come out and claim. Well, I don't think she'll clear her half with a kick in this second, I'd be surprised if she did. It's important. That's it. Gemma Davison. Here's Bassett. You can see Laura Bassett's trying to draw the players out. And they're just not coming towards her. Very difficult to play against a team that's just... just parked, the bus parked everything across there. <laughs> That's a goal kick, just isn't England's day so far. This is a real test, they had to... Lost their opening game. And still the fans who went over there and the band remained optimistic and those of us who were close to the team felt sure they could pass the tests that were up and coming and they did. This is a different sort of test here now, sir. It is, and it's obviously they played Germany on Thursday and drew nil nil. And, and like I said, that, that was a defensive test. It was how can they cope against some of the best attacking players. Here, it's how can they break down a really stubborn team. They're just going to sit back. They're going to make it difficult. They're going to be very physical. And at the minute, England are struggling, but I'm sure once they get one, I'm sure that the floodgates will open and I think they may tire. Stokes. It's a lovely turn and should be a free kick and should be punishment here for the fullback, Djakovic. Quite right too. Had to be. That was about a third or a fourth one. Lovely turn from Laura Bassett, just using her body really well. I think all of her challenges have just been more clumsy than anything else, but you have to stop that. The referee did. He's absolutely hosing down with rain. Crystal. hurts Galina with everyone behind the ball again. One player in the wall, at least Spanish. No relation to the defender, Spanish, the number four, the captain, who's been outstanding. And it comes.
comes to the edge of the penalty here. Horton back to Nobbs. Good goalkeeping. Made sure it stuck. Did well. It's a good effort from Jordan Nobbs. Keep it low. When these conditions, it's very slippy. Just gets it. It's a good effort because that could have slid up. But like you say, again, good goalkeeping, good positioning. I would be surprised if we see Jill Scott pretty soon. Stokes. Good carry into a Luco. Lifted ahead, dispossessed by Amir Spanich. Stoney will bring it forward. Porter, give and go, gets it back, Bassett's to her left. Tight into the middle, might have been more advisable to get it out wide to Demi Stokes on the left-hand side. Bosnia Herzegovina is glad to simply gain some yardage with the clearance. Can Clark get a cross in here at full stretch? Goal kick. Steph's looking for options and she sees Jess Clark 1v1. Ball's just running away from her. She couldn't get a foot around the ball, but that's where it has to go. It has to go out wide. So many bodies in the middle, just too congested. And if it does go in the middle, it's got to be one and two touch, really quick passing. Slipped under the foot there of Kulis. She got back to it. England now attacking the goal. Gave them their... Gave Bristol City their greatest ever moment, I guess, here in the history. Back in 76, a goal by Clive Whiten against Portsmouth. And that end took Bristol City into the old Division One, the then top line. I think it's going to go off for England. They're sitting down below us. It looks to me as if Jill Scott might be coming on. She's getting ready to come on anyway. Tall, distinctive. A 102nd international for her country. Got that special presentation before the game. Scored away in Estonia in the 8 nil win. I think, Jill's, sorry, I think Jill Scott will bring something different to the team. She's got that energy to get forward and, and back, and she makes those late runs into the box, which might be difficult for Bosnia and Herzegovina to actually pick her up. I think her, her ability on the floor gets unrecognised sometimes as well. Stoney to Horton. He has Turner available on the right side. Once again coming in short, but it's everything played in front of the heart of that Bosnian defence. Djakovic heads it away. Davison. Demi Stokes. Clark slipping away to the left-hand side of the penalty. Here. One touch too many. Nikolic will get it away. Yeah, yeah, no, then we'll do it now. Might have just heard the words there from the dugout. Let's do it now, let's do it now. And here comes the change. It's your old teammate who departs. Yeah, Jess Clark. I think she's had a, you know, a, a good first half performance. I think it was it was difficult for her, but I think when she she had the opportunity, she tried to beat the the fence. But like I say, as a forward player, it's so hard when, when the play is just always in front of you. And what a reception she's just got coming on. Great reception from the crowd. Step on the captain, of course. Bobs. Not seen Jill Scott play out wide very often. I think what she'll do, she'll probably interchange positions, maybe with Izzy Christiansen. Stoney. That's it. Time ticks on. Far well, short of the hour. And the Christiansen. Hancic dwelt on it. Turner can attack that in. Looking for any Luka. The challenge on her. And the Lekšić uh, defended in a centre back three throughout. Plays for Banja Luka, second in the 
Hosni and Lee, eight points behind the leaders. They've uh, played a game more as well. Never qualified for a major finals, Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is their 32nd European qualifier. They've won eight. They've conceded it nearly three a game in their history. Here's Davison. A good, well balanced run. That's a good ball driven out by Horton to Christensen to the dead ball line. Brought down, and she could go here. Already cautioned. Well, that's a bookable offence. That's a good diagonal ball again from, from Steph Horton and a, a good positive run. And they say that's a yellow card. She should have gone. Shouldn't be on the field. Nikolina Djakovic after that. She's a lucky girl. She knows it. You could just see when she went down, whether it was to try and avoid getting a card, but she was stretching her calves out, whether she was getting a little bit of cramp. So whether that fatigue is starting to set in. Ball rolling away, and there you get a sense of the wind power. Eleven wins for England's women this year, five defeats. Been banging in the goals in qualifying competition at World Cup level. Can they get their first at home in this competition? Could say it was arcing in. They average 5.2 goals a game in World Cup qualifying England. Can't find the back of the net here so far. It's a good save again. Is it Christensen actually going for goal there? Straight at the goalkeeper. But again, when you've got players around you, it's quite difficult to, to deal with, especially in these conditions when the ball's swerving. Horton, good ball to Stokes. Again cleared by Spahic. And it comes to Horton. And this is Spahic, gives it away. Jill Scott tries to slide it through. Out by Amira Spahic. Johnny Duggan's going to come on. Bright and bubbly character. Uh, when Isabel Christensen's looked across towards the dugout, so it could well be that Tony Duggan comes on for her clubmate. Stokes. Stoney to Horton. Good run here by Davis in England's best player. All the way through, oh, it's a good challenge by Spanish, who's been commendable at the back for Bosnia and Herzegovina, who are rated 72nd at the moment in the world rankings. England top five is Scott, in a space ahead of her. Knops, Horton, Bassett, is he Christensen? Will it come here then through the Demi Stokes? She needs a bit of support. Christensen. Again, Bosnia Herzegovina have 11 players within their own 25 yards. And Izzy Christensen is replaced. And it is going to be Tony Duggan who comes on for her. Now, she had listened to that reaction as well from the crowd because they know that she had a splendid World Cup qualifying campaign 10 goals in seven games, injury punctuated. Four starts in the World Cup finals. 14 goals for England in 32 internationals. They could do one tonight. Here she is. That's the return from Nobbs in towards Jill Scott and past two men. Tony Duggan's got that ability to just create a little bit of magic and score a wonder goal. I think that's that might be what's needed. Just get the breakthrough. Just run away from Duggan. Doesn't have the best of luck with injuries, was injured at the start of this international season. Jill Scott. Davison couldn't clear her feet. Horton 
Speared away by Elisa Spahic. Maybe one of their games in this qualifying campaign so far. Here's Bassett. Bassett. Can she get a cross in? Surprise if England don't get the shout to run at Djakovic as many times as they can. Duggan in that area having a look. No one making a really good run in now. That's what they could do with a Fran Kirby. I think they just need a, a target as well. Somebody to just stand still so they can play the ball in and they can just lay it off. They all seem to want the ball in, in behind into the space. If you can just have one person just stand in there. Jill Scott. Here's Duggan. Looking for Eni Aluko. Off. Zambegovic. Duggan. It would have been interesting had she gone down there. I think she might have been clipped as she turned by Spanish. Stayed on her feet, which again is another trait of the women's game. Canada, I think we saw one dive. Was it France? I can't remember. I think, so. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the English girls are very honest. Here's Bassett. Stokes. Again. Tried the one two with Jill Scott. And through to the goalkeeper, Elmina Hodgic once again. That's what I meant, though, Jill Scott, they just come in, just standing as a player. If her touch had been a little bit better, just play off her. And I think that's she's gone more central now. It's a usual position. Will England's fitness tell now? Don't forget, all these players have finished their club season, but they went out to the Far East with England, uh, played China out there and Australia out there. In the tournament, Bassett. There were simpler options on there. She had Jill Scott right and Tony Duggan inside left position. Scott makes the run. Sense the crowd urging. Uh, 2015. Heroes on. Autumn, great ball in Aluko! And it bounced back off her for a goal kick. Her initial header, I think, hit Hasan Begovic. That's a fantastic ball in. Just whipped, just in between the defence and the goalkeeper. And it's a good run from any Aluko. I think she did, did the defender just get a touch before her? It hit Hasan Begovic's left foot. Almost in the defender's stride pattern. I don't think she intentionally blocked it. Brilliant ball in. Yeah. Defenders can't do anything about that. 26 minutes to go. It's interesting that uh, um, Mark Sampson and the FA lined up that test in Germany on Thursday. I think they believed Bosnia would come like this, play like this, England would need to be patient. And his team was very patient in, in Germany on first when they could have won the game because of their patience. They frustrated Germany. They played a very cagey but very mature performance. Duggan with this corner kick. Horton is there with the header. Oh, she pushed off it then, Steph Horton. Here's Jill Scott to the dead ball line. And smacked away by Nikolina Djakovic. Was the England captain fouled here? You can see as she, she rises up, that's a push in the back, that's a penalty. Dead set penalty, here's Duggan. In from Stoney, Stokes with a header, misplaced. That's just what England need, just a little bit of luck. They could have just got that penalty. You can see as she rises, completely pushed her in the back, so it meant that Steph Orton couldn't get a clear header on it. Well, she clearly thought it was a penalty, and it was. It was. Very unfortunate. 
Nikolic, but nothing of the ball, mistimed her jump, smacked into the back of the England captain. Yeah, I don't even think she went for the ball. It's almost a curtain of rain hanging down over Ashton Gate. Look at that on the far side. Seem to remember it rained that night when Bristol City got promotion against Portsmouth. Can't remember the rest of the night, to be honest. <laughs> it was a bit of a blur. Here's Duggan. Knops. Oh, it fizzed, and the goalkeeper chose to punch. Uncomfortable at holding, and Luko slipped as it comes back in. Well, fortune favoured her there. She's deserved a break because she's played very well, the goalkeeper. It Actually, the ball really swerved, I think. If you, I don't know if we can actually see the angle again, but as the ball comes in, it just swerves just in front of her. Probably because of the wind and the, the driving rain. Could have gone horribly wrong for her, but she chose to get it away rather than risk the catches. Horton. And lumped out there by the uh, left side midfield player, defender Radalejic. Nobs with the chip. Back heel by Duggar. Just brought something extra to the party, I think. Very lively. Wants to get on the ball. Scott. Duggan. Lowen. Cracked hard. Nobs back to the captain. Here's Turner. Chipping, looking for Jill Scott in the air. A little bit too much underneath that. And now pressurise Alexic. Davison, misunderstanding there, and cleared again. If Bosnia Herzegovina can hold on to this, it would be the biggest result in their women's history, without a shadow of a doubt. Go to the team that finished third in the world in the summer and come away with a draw like this when you're rated 90, uh, 72nd in the world. What a result! They work very hard. Can they keep up that work rate right until the end? And Luke goes, Scott! Yes. England has the breakthrough! On the day, her prized nephews, her beloved nephews, were here to see her specially honoured by the FA. They see Jill Scott head England ahead. A wonderful day for her now. So pleased for Jill Scott with that goal, but good work from Eddie Aluko down this left-hand side. Beats the player and just a little dink cross. I think you know if Jill Scott's in the area, she's going to win the ball in the air. And that's a good directed header. Yes, I think the goalkeeper could have done a little bit better there. She's done excellent all night, just went underneath her, but so pleased for Jill Scott. She got a great reception when she came on, Jill Scott. One of the most popular players in the squad, in the women's game, great character and a vital, vital goal, scored against Estonia away in the first game. She's just got that desire as well and that passion to, to want to get on the end of the ball and want to score for her team. Could the weather get any worse? Here's Stokes into Duggan, she's been lively since she came on. Down, she wins the free kick. Pass it forward, Scott in there again, wiping her face against the rain. Cleared away by Djakovic. Turning in to make that challenge and did and comes away with the ball and has played very well. But she showed too much of it there and that's a risky challenge and she could be in big trouble here. That she could get a red for this. It's yellow. Well, I think if the French referee had some of Djakovic for the second book of all, she was going to give the England player the benefit of that ball, and yeah, you can see she just the way that's a yellow. Yeah, it's definitely not a red card. You can see the ball just slipped away from her on this surface. 
stood where it raised. Yeah. The Just turned the boot at the end, didn't she? Yeah. Saved her. It, it did. And like you say, she's had a, a good game. That would have been really disappointing for if that had been a red card because it, it wasn't a deserved one. Once more, very good player with Jerry Sharp, badly injured in a tackle against Middlesbrough. Matt Scott, really promising player, terrific player. It's a goal kick, and that really is the extent of their of Bosnian ambition when they get forward, just to wind down some extra seconds. Yeah, then they all just run back as, as quickly as they possibly can into the shape. Well, a 1-0 win wouldn't be enough to take England top of the group, but uh, it would be a victory. And on a day like this against very, very well-organised opposition, of whom Amira Spahic, the number four, has been outstanding, so is the goalkeeper. It would be a mightily relieved England if they could go away with a victory of any sort. Stokes, good one-two played there with Duffett. Left foot cross looking for Knox, eased away. Here's Horton. I don't know if you heard a buzz on the line there. I think it's the water getting in. In comes across for England looking for Duggan. And she's off the ball there. She's looking at the referee as well. Don't think that was as strong a shout, Sue. I don't think it was. She, I think she did get pushed. So as the as the cross came in again, that's a good delivery. No, I don't think. I think it was just a. She, it's like she missed times a jump slightly and does get a little nudge in the back. But I don't think it's as strong a shout as, as Steph Horton's was earlier on, which for me was definitely a penalty. Well, the good news is that the wind seems to veering, be veering, so the rain is coming into our faces now, sir. So. <laughs> Have you noticed I've just stood back a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here's Bassett. And Stokes. Bassett slips into the edge of the penalty here. Aluko. Cleverly done. Port into the edge of the box. Jill Scott goes to work with a uh, one-two with Davis and didn't come off. All England totally dominant in terms of possession. Seventy percent of possession, of course, for England. Saw a few minutes ago. They remain totally dominant with the ball. Duggan. His passes. Luka coming away from goal. Could cherish a goal tonight. My hoist into the box. Looking for Jill Scott. We said on Thursday night, didn't we, when watched the England game, were we surprised that Jill Scott scored tonight against Bosnia? That was a good call from you again. It's a very rare success. Success rate over the years. <laughs> Disappointing. Corner kick to England. Very impressed, by the way, with your pace getting down there to do the half-time interview and running back in this rain on a wet touchline we actually you didn't know this we were running a secret camera on you just to see if you fell over <laughs> it would have been hilarious i was close it was very slippy down there in comes the corner kick and knobs davison going to that corner of the penalty area Just to throw to England. Well, confirmation of the crowd, 13,000. That's a terrific result for the FA and for England's women's football. Very much on the up because it is a rotten day. The fans could have stayed away. They could get a cross in here through Stokes, who was hurt, still got the cross in. Comes out here to Jordan Nobbs. Edged back in by Davison, still loose. Nobbs again. Over it goes. Good one-two touch. Jordan Nobbs involved again. Ball comes to her and 
She's so lively in and around the penalty area, got so much energy and is not afraid to shoot. She needs to get her head over the ball a little bit more. Just under a quarter of an hour left. There's confirmation of that attendance. Will bring it out. Good diagonal. Duggan have pulled off a marker. Now turns into space looking for a Luca. Good break for Bassett. No, it won't. Elena Nikolic can bring it away. She was the girl who scored the hat trick against Estonia and scored against Serbia very late on in the week. She's unhappy there with the challenge of Demi Stokes. Nothing wrong with it. haven't conceded a home goal in qualifiers since France scored at Sellers Park in a World Cup playoff back in 2003. Marinette Pichon. Got the goal that day. Were you playing? I knew you were going to ask that. I think so. Oh. I should know these things, shouldn't I? Could you, can you remember the games you played <laughs> no. last week? Last week, just about, <laughs> yeah. I've had a sleep since then. <laughs> That's it. But players available to the right hand side. Stoney. Horton to the edge of the box. Hobbs coming away from the penalty air. So much of England's players, you know, a player picking up possession, facing away from the penalty area. Here's Davidson. They've dealt with her better in this second half. Bosnia and Herzegovina cross low, eased away by uh, Amira Spahic, who I think has been outstanding for Bosnia and Herzegovina. They had two or three back in there. The goalkeeper, of course, Hasan Begovic, the tall number five, has played well. Kulis, the uh, left back. And with 12 minutes to go, they will be delighted with this scoreline, Bosnia Herzegovina. They really will. I've been impressed by how tirelessly they've worked and they've pressurised and they've just made it so hard for, for England. It will be a defeat for them, but uh, an honourable one. England haven't won it yet, of course. Stokes. Here's Duggan. Field to Horton. Hands have it left. They will be absolutely saturated. Used to be an indoor bowls area on that far side, and when we passed down, we didn't know how to do the bowls afterwards. I don't know whether it's still there. First in the country to have that as well. Bristol City trendsetters back in the day. Here's Duggan. Nobbs. Cleared away by uh, Nikolina Djakovic. Nobbs not going to make a change. Djakovic is going to go off. I think that's to protect her. She's had a yellow card, she's had a warning. Horton, Bassett, here's Duggan. Lengthy stride, the pace about her. Horton's come away to this left hand side. Bassett can hit it from there. Off target, worth a go though. It was worth a go. I think when the ball finds you in acres of space there, why not just have a go? Here comes the substitute, Anna Lihovic, who's played in all four qualifiers so far, and off goes uh, Djakovic. 
Ljevic plays in Sweden for Kungsbacka. And there to the uh, Gothenburg club a couple of years ago. Has scored at international level. One in 12 international games. England are going to make the change to... It's going to be Rose to come on. She'll get a terrific reception. Made it to Bristol Academy. For uh, what, some five years during Mark Sampson's spell here. Duggan. Here's Nobbs. Horton. Misplaced pass into Jill Scott. A little bit ragged there. Here's Stoney to Knox. Around the corner, Aluko smothered five blue shirts around her. That's Nikolic, nominally the centre forward. Plays a lot of her football off the main centre forward, who today is sort of the number 10 of Issa Spahic. They've rarely gone beyond 30 yards from their own dead ball line. He's not. To Duggan. Turning into trouble. So eight minutes to go, 1-0. It's not what people expected. It's not what people wanted, of course. So they'd accept the win, but how critical will Mark Samson be of his team's performance? I think he'll be frustrated, as will the players be, because it's a it's a tough game to, to play in. But I think he'll be probably quite happy with his, his three points. But, yeah, it's, it's things that they'll have to work on. They'll have to work on how can you break down a, a team like this. And I'm sure that's something that, that he'll do, because there'll be other games that this will happen in as well. Here comes Gemma Rose. And off goes the captain. Got two spells in Bristol, Gemma Rose. Uh, a little time at Birmingham sandwich between the two who was the FA's young player of the year in 2011 scored the goal of the season that year against Doncaster <laughs> FA Cup runner up with Bristol now plays at Arsenal back at uh, in the top flight football and in finals Continental Cup this year here's Jill Scott Cleared away again by Spahic initially. And the cross behind by Turner. Precious thing for England now in the last six minutes of play is to ensure there is a victory. Yeah, I think there's no doubt that that'll be the case. It's just can they maybe get another goal, another couple of goals, just for the fans? Turned out in absolute force. This horrible weather. And here's Nikolic. You are hearing a few crackles at home. It is because the microphones are being affected by the water. Free kick here for Bosnia and Herzegovina. England need to be disciplined and well drilled. What is it about um, holding your phone torch up these days? What do the uh, what do the youngsters do? That Sue Smith, you're a youngster. In comes a free kick. Meanwhile, all the way through. I was say, don't ask me. I'm not a youngster anymore. Cleared away. I think it just looks nice, doesn't it? You're shaking your head at me. <laughs> Baffled by many things. Comes the throw then. Eased away by Duggan.
Well, there's no urgency, no ambition really beyond going away with this defeat, keeping the scoreline down. The best hopes lay with a nil-nil draw. They are so much better today, Bosnia Herzegovina. They were in both. They were pretty poor against Belgium in both games. Belgium shouldn't beat England in the group, but they have two big wins against Bosnia Herzegovina. England at the moment have struggled. I think England will probably find it a little bit easier against Belgium, just because I think they'll come out and play a little bit more. Belgium won in Bosnia at home to Bosnia Herzegovina, six 0 on away 3-0. Stoney brings it out. Here's Stokes. Three and a half minutes to go, a little bit more. Rose. Stoney. Chip into the box. Mihiric was there with the uh, figure of Demi Stokes, and away it goes for a, a goal kick. That's what it's all about. Still having a good day in the room. Who's your man of the match, Sue? It's quite tough because it's, it's been a, a tough night for a lot of them. Um, I've actually gone for Gemma Davidson for her first half performance. I think she was lively, I think she was creating, creative, I think she wanted to make things happen. So I've, I went for Gemma Davidson. Terrific first half. But the way, that, the way they handled her in the second half, I think, speaks volumes of, of the manner of their performance. And we talked about England's performance in Germany on Thursday being a mature one. And I think that uh, Bosnia will look on this as a, as a growing maturity in the team. It made it very, very difficult for England. Yeah, I think so. I think they, they'll learn a lot of, of lessons from this as well. And I think, like you, you mentioned, the fact that I think Gemma Davidson was probably a talking point at half time and how can they cope with her? And they have done much better. I thought a first half performance probably stood out. Rose from distance, well wide. But I think it's a, a worthier exercise for England to come up against teams like this and qualify, even if they haven't played at their best today, England. And, you know, it hasn't been a hugely edifying spectacle. A win will be a win for him, and that's the way he'll treat it. But a better exercise than this, uh, than, this than winning 8-0, 9-0, as they did in the World Cup qualifying. Oh, yeah, because you come into tournaments and it's it's much tougher. And it's, you know, how do you break teams down? How do you do certain things? So I think when you have a competitive game that, that will be hard, you know, the girls will, will be tired after this game because they've had to constantly try and create things and lots of different movement. So this is good for when they go into a, a challenge like at a World Cup or a European Championships. Jill Scott turning into space and still going, and the space was denied it. It wasn't a free kick. His, her goal separates the sides. Here's Bassett. Back again. There will be three minutes of time added on. Can England get a second? Wasn't a good ball through. At times they have attempted to thread the eye of a needle when there have been slimper options. Wasn't they going to make another substitution? Elisa Spahic, nominally their attacking force today, to be replaced by Serena Piskic. Started two of their last uh, three qualifiers. Midfield player from the SFK 2000 Sarajevo club. To say one of ten players from that side in this squad. We're into the three minutes of stoppage time now. She's in no hurry. They come to nullify the gate. 
come to frustrate and they've done it. It's a sluggish trudge off. Disappointing the referee let her have that time too, really. Could have hurried it all up. I think so, and I just think she was physically shattered with the amount of work that she's she's put in. But it's you know it's a time wasting exercise as well. Here's Nobbs. Slipped away from her. Here's that substitute now. Away towards Lehovic. England need to maintain their concentration. Otherwise, this could yet go horribly wrong. Interesting coaches talk nowadays about players need to perform for 95 minutes. Not the 90 minutes. Here's Duggan into Nobbs. Lovely exchange. And a good tackle by Melissa Hassan Pegovic, who's been excellent for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina today. Right at the end, they have a free kick. They're going to make another change. Antonella Redelic is going off. Tatiana Stanic will come on for the midfield player from the Banja Luka club. And there was a sub against Belgium at home in uh, October. Poor delivery. Bassett with the header away. Here's Aluko. She'll be really frustrated by today's event, Sonny Aluko. Stoney to Rose. And here to Turner. Good high press there by Bosnia. His last couple of minutes, they've just stepped 10, 20 metres a little bit higher. Oh, can you remember the anxiety in the closing stages of games in Canada? Well, England seem to have games won, they nearly slipped away. Here comes the uh, substitution of Radalic going off. assistant should be up the line here and saying come on away there's a fourth official there too it was quite interesting because she started to jog and all of their bench was saying slow down slow down so well I interpreted that's what they were saying <laughs> <laughs> disappointing though to you know if this is the extent of your ambitions go away with a 1-0 defeat but there you are it's a Sport very much at a different developmental stage in the England women's game where they are professionals now and playing in WSL. Here's Duggan. Well, it hasn't been the homecoming party that England expected. But it is a victory for Mark Sampson, and that makes it two in two in this European, European qualifying campaign thus far. The winning goal took a long time coming, and it came from the substitute, Jill Scott. A frustrating night for England, but it's three points. They've beaten Bosnia and Herzegovina by one goal to This is what Group 7 looks like now. England have played 2-1-2. Two, two. The win takes them up to second in the table. Their next qualifier is at home to Belgium next April. 1-0, not what we expected, Kelly. That was a very difficult game for England tonight. Uh, Bosnia made it extremely difficult. They had no interest in setting out to win the game. Very defensive display. 11 plays behind the ball at uh, all times. Karen Barsley didn't have a shot to make. Um, it was a frustrating night for England, but obviously picking up the three points is the main thing today. Rachel, your thoughts overall on England's performance in their first home qualifier? Of course, it's disappointing that we didn't get that raft of goals that we kind of expected. But put it in perspective, it's the end of a very, very long, successful season for all these England players, both domestically. You know, this is the final game. They had uh, three days ago, they played Germany. So it's long, 
It's been a hot, long, hard season. Really, really wonderful, attractive football. Today they ground it out. They got the result. And they got that result thanks to Jill Scott, who made an impact after coming on. We can have a look at her goal now. Yeah, that, that's what you want from yourselves. Mark Sampson has said that. You want to come on, you're being that impact player. There's some space opens up on the left here for any. She beats her player, left-footed shot, and Jill Scott does what she does best, arrives in the box late and just guides the header back into the, into the back of the net. You see the space there. Tony Doug, uh, Duggan wants to get on the ball, nice little ball in, and he just looks up, a little bit of space, left-footed cross. Jill Scott just hangs out and guides it back and the goalkeeper should do better. That's what we're looking for was pinpoint crosses. I think in the first half we had so many crosses into the box but they weren't necessarily picking out players. The exact opposite with this happened and they got the reward for it. And do you think England should have had a penalty before that goal? I think possibly it's one of those that will go down as, you know, seeing them given. Yes, it's a late tackle, uh, sorry, a late challenge on Steph Orton, and it could well have been a penalty, but, you know, we're clutching at straws if that's what we want to try and win the game against Bosnia. I don't think the ref was in, in the, the best position. She wasn't even looking at contact on Steph, and for me that wasn't a penalty. Jordan Nobbs in press, didn't she? She had, I mean, since she's come back from the World Cup, obviously she picked up an injury which limited her playing time in the World Cup. She's been really impressive. The game on Thursday against Germany, she was very impressive. And, you know, she was one of the few England players to test the goalkeeper tonight. Really, really, you know, that first half chance was a, a good chance. And she gets in space. She's a very clever player, hangs out on the edge of the box and has got a fantastic strike from distance. The type of player that England don't have too many of now that Kelly's retired. <laughs> no, she's a key player for England. And when Jordan Nobbs plays, she makes the team tick. She's a box-to-box -box player. She's energised. She always wants to get on the ball. She never hides for club and country. And she's a pleasure to watch and, and, and to play with her. Frustrating afternoon for Enya Luko, who will be pleased at least it come to some consolation that she was involved in the goal. Well, I think, first of all, she started the match, and I think that will be something she'll be really pleased with, having, again, limited opportunities during the World Cup. But, yes, yeah, she'll have gone into this game hoping to make an impact, to get a couple, you know, get three goals maybe to finish this long season on a high. It didn't quite happen for her, but it was three points, and ultimately I think that's the message that Mark Sampson will be giving to his team now. Overall thoughts on the, on the year England have had, including the World Cup? Wonderful, what a year it's been. Uh, recognition all across the world and in England. These players are now household names. Obviously, it wasn't the performance that we'd wanted to watch coming off the back of that World Cup, but full credit to all the, the players. Mark Sampson, England women's football now is on the map, and long may it continue. They've got a good, um, strong qualification campaign next year. Hopefully, he's top the group and then do really well in the European Championships. This year, 2015, has been about making history for not just for England women's football, for women's sport in general. Again, as Kelly said, it's put it on the map, it's here to stay, and um, I'm, if no one else is, I cannot wait for the rest of the European qualifiers and to see England go out there and get silverware. And just to bring you up to date with another one of our qualifiers, Scotland against Macedonia ended 10-0. Thank you to all of you and our former England internationals, Kelly Smith and Rachel brown Finnis. And the model of moral of the day is, don't get stressed when it's still nil-nil, just take a chill pill. Goodbye. Being a British guy in 2015